When someone invites you over to their house for a late night fire, you'd probably expect to see an average bonfire. But in Jamestown artist Brooke Almquist's backyard, you'll find something quite different. In October of 2021, Almquist was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, which prevents her from working. During her newfound excess time, she started watching hula hooping tutorials on YouTube. So I have a lot of free time and I kind of lose my mind, to be honest. And I thought it was cool and I just bought my own hula hoop and started learning. Almquist started practicing day and night. And she was really into it. Um, I mean, I'd wake up at 3 a.m. Uh, with her smacking uh, her hoop off our, our ceiling fan every night. As a result of her diagnosis, she had to quickly learn how to go with the flow. She started participating in flow arts, which combines multiple disciplines like fire spinning with hula hooping. Almquist hosts regular flow practice sessions in her yard. Things are getting really heated here in the backyard. Well, it's called flow art because it really gets you into a flow state. So it's like therapy in a way flow with your flow props and forget about everything. Omquist says that people of different genders often gravitate towards different instruments. She prefers to use a specific prop. I love doing fire fans. Some props, there's, it's more like tech, like it's more like doing things with your hands and it's tricky, you know what I mean? And then you have ones that are very like flowy and like dance based. Omquist will soon be taking her spinning skills from the backyard to the front stage. She'll be performing with her flow group, the Lunar Pyros, at the Roots Reggae Rock Festival on October 7th in Steenburg, New York. I'm Will Carr with News 11. Downtown Fredonia looks a little different this fall. Bird scooters have popped up around the village and are now seen on sidewalks in front of local businesses. The scooters serve as a grab and go option, allowing users to simply find a scooter, scan the QR code and go. But remember, users should wear a helmet and must have a valid driver's license to ride. In fact, scooter safety has become a common conversation among the Fredonia community. Well, I think it's important that uh, whether you're on a bicycle or a scooter or simply just a walking pedestrian, uh, be mindful of your surroundings. When we're out in public, um, especially moving near traffic, we should be uh, just paying attention. That's, that's the way you stay safe. Some community members even enjoy taking the scooters out for a ride. As of right now, just because it's so much nicer outside and it's like a little, you know, fresh breath of fresh air a little bit. The scooters also provide an eco-friendly option to get around town. So I don't have to pay for gas. I could just charge this overnight and then the next morning I don't have to worry about it at all. Keep in mind, bird scooters can't be taken onto campus in Barker Commons or in Forest Hill Cemetery. So remember, on your next ride, wear your helmet and stay alert. Reporting in Fredonia, I'm Chloe Kowalik, News 11. And the only reason you can see the wind turbines is because they are taller than the horizon. The Fredonia Honors Program ditched their books on Parents Weekend to take a supernatural tour through the Dunkirk Lighthouse. Um, there were about 15 people each group that came. We took them through, gave them a little bit of history of the lighthouse itself before they actually started the ghost hunting. And we rolled up the Those that attended the paranormal tour shared that it was quite impressive. I been at Fredonia for five years, but I've never actually gone there. I've only driven by it. So to get to go there at night and see the lighthouse and also do the ghost hunt was really cool and a really cool opportunity for them to fundraise. The Paranormal Tour acted as a fundraiser for the lighthouse, charging students a cover of $20 per person. And the ghost tour that we did with the college, that was a fundraiser for us. The ghost hunters don't charge us anything. They do that just to help us, just to you know, make a little bit more money for us so that um, you know, we can keep the gate open. The Dunkirk Lighthouse is one of the area's most historic locations. Well, we've had a lighthouse on the property since 1826. Um, the house that we're in right now was built in 1875. In the end, the event left students wanting more. I absolutely would go back. I would really love to go on one of their daytime tours and get to see more about the house itself and get to take my time and explore it and everything that they have in there. 
The Dunkirk Lighthouse provides students and families with multiple opportunities each year to learn about its history while seeing it close up. I'm Alana Wingate, News 11. Meet Zarn Mehta, a high school sophomore from Chicago. He has been playing the piano since he was four years old and just received the grand prize at the Sorrell Piano Competition at SUNY Fredonia. I, I entered my first competition when I was five years old and I've been keep on going ever since. He explained the competition is about more than just the prize. It's also a great opportunity just to be able to play with other people uh, and like or listen to other people that are um, just uh, among my level. After high school, Meta plans to continue his piano career, but is also interested in branching out into other potential career paths. I mean, I would also like to do something like maybe related to economics or medicine as well. The annual competition celebrated its seventh year of gathering young musicians from across the country. Along with a standard performance competition, a big aspect of the event included gathering piano students to collaborate and learn together. The competition basically has two aspects. It has the competition itself, and then it has the Fellows Day, which, in which we invite people uh, to come and partake in a recital, in master classes, in private lessons, uh, discussions before and after the competition, and it's, it's so much fun to work with these young people. The competition concluded with an awards ceremony honoring the achievements of the competitors. The seventh Claudette Sorrell Piano Competition first prize award goes to Zarin Meta. The competition, funded by the Claudette Sorrell Foundation and organized through the SUNY Fredonia Music Department, will once again be searching for more young pianists in the coming year. At SUNY Fredonia, I'm David Morse for News 11. Your vote travels from here in Fredonia to the U.S. Capitol. In fact, these arches are believed to be the only double arches east of the Mississippi River. It's a Sinclairville Annual History Fair. What an activity to do at every turn. There's no shortage of things to do. We've got a bunch of events happening right behind us right now with live music, raffle games, and food. To you, these may appear to be ordinary books from an ordinary bookstore. But to a few, these books and the selling and purchasing of these books means far, far more. Besides getting your holiday shopping done early, there's a variety of food that you can enjoy outside. Single-use plastics often wash up on the shores of lakes and beaches, like right here at Point Gratiot Park. In the daytime, this may look like a normal alley, but by nighttime, it becomes a place where music comes alive. There are raffles, CDs, and shirts like these on sale at the event to benefit Roswell. During the day, this may look like a normal hiking spot, but at night, things get a little bit spookier on the trail. 